You know, the last couple of weeks, I've talked about some changes happening in the real estate market in the Des Moines area. And uh, we're going to talk this week a little bit about the July 4th turn point here. So it seems like every year after the 4th of July, the market changes. It usually uh, starts to slow down a little bit. But I think this year, we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a difference. And so the question this week is, are we experiencing a bounce after the 4th of July? Let's find out. Hey there, Les Solgrove. Hey, thanks again for joining me this week. If you enjoy the content and you find it valuable, please hit the share button and the subscribe button. And also, while you're there, click that notification bell. You'll be notified of any new shows as they come up. So your support helps this channel grow and create more great videos for you and everyone else. So enjoy the show this week. So we talked a little bit uh, last two or three weeks about the end of the month and end of the quarter and then kind of where we're going to see things head as we move into the second half of 2024. And so this week we're going to talk a little bit about um, consumer sentiment. Uh, the, the Fannie Mae reports out this last couple of weeks and uh, we're going to talk about a couple of those slides and also kind of look and see if we're starting to see a change in the marketplace as we move forward. So let's jump right in here. So uh, this week also is has got some links embedded into this show. So I will put these links, this particular, this one right here, this Fannie Mae.com media. This is the actual uh, home purchase sentiment link. That'll be in the uh, the show comments this week as well as another one as we get toward the end of the show. Uh, Fannie Mae produces this monthly home purchase sentiment index, HPSI. It's a composite index, as it says, and it, it basically asks six questions consistently every month. And from those six questions, they come up with, you know, what kind of the the, the sentiment of home buyers and home sellers uh, of the marketplace. So um, they ask about a thousand, little over a thousand household uh Financial decision makers is what they call those uh, with a plus or minus of about 3.8%. And so let's see kind of what happened here this last month. We we started to show you this last month and, and uh, as, as a beginning new new portion of the show every once in a while. And it comes out, uh, it's going to come out about the second week of every month. So I'll start to bring it in about the third third week of each month here. So they ask people again this last month if they're planning to move if they were planning to move would they buy or would they rent and you can see that we're slightly up um, last month it was I think 31% now this month it's 32% said that they would rent and 66% or 67% said uh, this month that they would buy so that's down just very very slightly from last month as far as the, the decision whether or not they would buy or not. Uh, you can kind of see the trend line there. I've overlaid the trend line. It has been trending down the last few um, weeks or a few months. Uh, this goes all the way back to May of 2023. And as we move forward, I'll then show year over year. Uh, but the sentiment looking right now, it looks like more people are thinking like they would consider renting uh, increasing over the long term. Now it's it's less than you know a th less than a third of people planning to move would rent. So it's still uh, a high buyer market for those planning to move. But the uh, trending is is not moving in the favor uh, as well as maybe we would like to see it. Uh, as far as buying conditions, whether or not it's a good time or a bad time to buy, uh, we did see a little uptick this last month. 19% uh, said it's a good time to buy, while still 81% they feel like it's not quite the best time to buy. And I know that a lot of that has to do with mortgage interest rates. Um, but uh, it's nice to see that number jump up a little bit. The high was March of this, or actually June of last year was 22%. So, um, you know, year over year, the sentiment is a little bit less uh, confident, saying it's a good time to buy. I think that's just because we've seen those mortgage interest rates uh, string out there uh, for such a long period of time. As far as home sellers go, 66% um, said that they felt like it was a good time to sell versus a 33. So it's about two thirds to one third difference there. And again, that's been fairly steady since uh, February, run right around that 65, 66% mark of uh, wanting to sell. Now, obviously, 
whether or not it's a good time to sell, we still have home uh, homeowners that do put their home on the market and buyers that do buy based on uh, needs outside of economic reasons. So, you know, uh, job changes, divorces, transfers, uh, new families, getting married, children, those kind of things. That usually uh, is is a factor that um, helps drive at least the uh, uh, these numbers up just a little bit. So we ended. We started the show last week looking at homes for sale, and we did start to see in, an increase in the number of homes for sale. And this week we have 3,503 homes for sale. It's the first time we have uh, went above 3,500 homes for sale in a very, very long time, all the way back to, um, what is it, uh, February 9th of 2020 is how far you have to go back. To, to the point where we've actually had this many homes, actually a few more homes in this on the market since February of 2020. So that's a, a pretty long streak that we've we've passed. And I think we're going to continue to see this number grow. Um, I would love to see us hit 4,000 homes this year, but I'm not sure that we're going to see that. Uh, the only reason I think we might have a chance at that is, is if home buyers, the pace of home buyers drops considerably, uh, then the inventory would just continue to grow. But at that point, we'll, it would be growing for not as good of a reason as it could. We're hoping that we have more homes coming on the market, not the fact that that uh, home uh, home buyers aren't buying as much. And this is evidenced uh, by looking at this number for this past week. We only had 200 homes that went under contract this past week. And you know it was a full week after the holiday, um, you know, we knew it was going to be down for the holiday, but this week prior, but this last week we were down um, still considerably. And if you look right here, you can see that, you know, we were 275 homes or so a, a year ago at this time. So um, the trending that we saw from last year is only going to go down. So that's what that's where my fear comes in is that we're going to continue to see um, home buyers maybe not buying as well. If you look at these uh, purchases week over week for the entire year, we're averaging about 210, 209 homes going under contract, but uh, just 200 this past week is all we had. As far as year-to-date homes closed, uh, I've been saying all along that because we have the uh, reduced number of pendings going under the going into contract, um, we're going to start to see that catch up to closed sales, and we've seen that this week. We finally have seen um, fewer homes uh, year to date than we did from a year ago. We've been right at or slightly above all year so far until this past week, week 28, and uh, we're now 35 homes uh, behind last year. So um, let's take a quick peek at mortgage interest rates now. Uh, looking at mortgage interest rates, we did also see a, a, a new, uh, I wouldn't call it a record, but a, a good sign here. You can see that prior to um, prior to any week, prior to week 28, we have had higher mortgage interest rates than last year at every single week going by until this past week. And this week, our mortgage interest rates were below last year's numbers. And we can see that better probably on this. Uh, linear chart going across. Uh, this is showing you the blue line is 2023, and we have crossed under. Now, um, you know, the next couple of weeks here uh, it, from 2023, rates actually dipped, so we might go back and forth. But if this trend comes farther down as we get near the end of third quarter, there's a good chance that we will see uh, lower mortgage rates compared to year over year. And that could actually spur uh, some buyer activity out there if we get some positive information and positive feedback from home buyers that rates are, are a little bit lower than last year. Um, it wasn't until uh, right around November 1st of last year, end of October, that we saw mortgage rates finally um, drop off fairly dramatically. And that really, it did increase the sales near the end of the year. So hopefully, uh, we'll see something similar, and if not, at least we'll see this trend line continue downward and stay below last year. It would be great to be under 2022 as well, because that would mean that we were pre-mortgage uh, interest rate uh, rises. So if this line continues at this path, it's conceivable that we would be back under rates uh, prior to the, the, the ramp up there in late 2022. As far as buying power goes, um, it's kind of interesting, you know, the median sale price uh, this past week of all homes sold was $300,000. And uh, if you look at 
based on a $2,000 monthly principal and interest payment only, that would fund a $303,000 mortgage, which means that by the time you owe, you add taxes and insurance on top of this number, um, home buyers are still paying more uh, and it's costing more to fund um, the, the typical finance mortgage. It just happens to be very close to the, the median sale price as far as the mortgage uh, buying power and the median sale price. I guess just the, the correlation is, is that, you know, it's still it's still kind of a tough market there for uh, some home buyers that are price sensitive and payment sensitive uh, to compete into the marketplace. But again, once we start to see this crossover, which we see again right here, uh, if we start to see this buying power increase over uh, the 30 year fixed rate mortgage uh, amount from last year's um, incre increases last year, we'll start to see buying power start to increase. And again, that's just a sign that we'll see. Uh, maybe some more action as we move into third quarter. This is all good signs here. As far as um, back to the uh, Fannie Mae report here, they asked the question, do you feel like mortgage rates are going to go up, go down, or stay the same? And predominantly uh, this last quarter, because we saw mortgage interest rates quarter last month, we saw mortgage interest rates start to rise uh, during the month of May. Uh, most home buyers out there were started to feel the effect of that and said, "Hey, you know what? I think they're going to go up. Um, going, staying the same. Uh, they didn't think they were going to go down or up. Stayed exactly the same as well. They're at 42%, and um, there's a, kind of a, a feeling that that uh, most people don't feel like uh, rates are going to go down much more. Um, we'd like to see this number. You know this." this uh, rates going down and then uh, this bottom trend line here would start to trail up as people kind of feel like that's going to continue or not. So um, as far as home prices go, we didn't talk really much about pricing this week. We'll catch that here in the future show. But as far as uh, from the um, uh, sentiment report from the National Housing Survey, again, most consumers out there that were, that were asked felt like prices were not done rising. Um, we're up uh, a pretty good chunk there. They went from 41% up to 45%. Uh, maybe that's 42. I can't remember what it was last month, but still a, a pretty good increase. And, um, you know, home those same people that maybe were on the fence last month saying they were going to stay the same have now switched over and said that prices were going to go up. Um, only 17% feel like home prices are going to go down. And again, uh, this link here will be available in the uh, comment section so you can click on that and get the full report as well. So one last area here we'll talk about this week and we um, really haven't talked about this one for very for a very long time. This is the showing time report. I got the shirt on here. I'm wrapping them. Um, this is the activity of uh, lock or of uh, showings scheduled. Um, in the system in the Des Moines and Central Iowa real estate market. And you can see that, um, you know, they're really were up this month um, as, as uh, mortgage rates started to maybe drop a little bit. We're starting to see some more showings. Doesn't necessarily equate to more buyers or, or sales, but at least showings are up. And you can see the overlay looks at uh, versus 2020, which is pre-COVID, all the way uh, through this current year. And if we strip out some of these here, let me get my mouse over here. If we strip out some of these and just look at last year, you can see that showing activity is actually up quite a bit versus last year. Um, but it's really impressive if we look at it, just looking at going back to 2020. Um, there we go. Uh, back to 2020, you'll start to see here that uh, we're pretty much right on track with where we were as far as showing activity back prior, just in April, because this dip right here indicates when COVID hit. Um, and but we were pretty close as far as um, you know prior to COVID hitting, uh, and it looks like the last two or three months here have been pretty, or several weeks anyway, have been pretty much right on track with with uh, pre-COVID. So. Um, Showing activity is back. That's a good sign. I know that open house traffic has been up. I know that price reductions still remain high. And um, so these are all probably indications that uh, are, are uh, data that shows us that uh, showings are going to increase a little bit there. So anyway, that's kind of the show this week. Um, get my ugly face out of there again. Uh, next week, we'll come back and we'll start to look at uh, some different stats again that maybe we haven't seen for a while. Uh, talk a little bit about pricing, 
uh, see which category of the markets may be moving a little bit faster than the other. And uh, please leave a question if you have any in the in the comments. I'd be happy to answer those for you. And in the meantime, stay cool out there. Uh, it's going to be a hot couple of days here just to the start of the week and then cool back off. But uh, maybe all that rain has, has left us for a while. So take care. See you later. And uh, don't forget, go to DesMoinesMarketValues.com for all the data you've seen today as well as historical data. Talk to you soon.